Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Thank you. This is the Bishop, Bishop Richardo Gordon, coming to you live right here on Facebook. Just waiting for persons to jump on and to load on as we commence session four, night number four. Hallelujah. So as you are jumping on, as you are jumping on, as you are jumping on, share and invite, share and invite, share and invite, share and invite, um, like, share and invite, um, get some people on this program, uh, thanks for jumping on, Prophet Chris, Michelle, thank you, thank you Dwayne for jumping on, um, there are some exciting things that we're about to, to do, Kevin, it's great to have you tonight again, praise the Lord, Bishop Acha. It's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on this telecast, this broadcast as well. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And um, as we get ready, there are some very powerful and exciting things that I have to share with you. Karen, how are you doing? Some very powerful things I have to share with you and uh, all of that. Thank you, Bishop. Grace and peace be to you as well. Amen. There are some powerful things that I'm going to be sharing on this on this broadcast tonight. I, um, my teddy bear, my beautiful wife, is not with me tonight. She's at choir practice directing the, the choir. But um, so I'm on my own tonight as it pertains to doing this, this this broadcast. I'm going to ask you, please continue to invite and share. Continue to invite and share because there are some things that I'm going to be sharing tonight that is going to be profound. For a matter of fact, um, I believe that this is going to be one of those defining moments as how we correct some things in the prophetic and how we avoid some dangers of the prophetic as to how we get past um, some of the pitfalls that we may find ourselves in. So um, just to ask you once again, in preparation for what I'm going to be doing tonight, make sure that you have your pen, have your notepad and get ready to write because the faintest ink is better than the greatest memory. So I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to ask you also as you get ready to write and to um, um, take notes and so forth and so on that you will share and invite others to jump on and to hear what this man of God has to say on tonight as we deal with this matter that is of urgent um, consequences. The seven pitfalls of the prophetic the seven pitfalls of the prophetic praise the lord greetings to you dr jazz and uh, the people from orlando that is in the house i know that this telecast should be going live as well on praise fm in the island of nevis um saint kitts and nevis so if you're in that region jump on um uh, it's great to have in your cola as we as we get into this teaching here tonight um so last night we dealt with a powerful um time as we looked at the seven operations or moods of the prophet okay we used the seven s's last night tonight i'm going to be giving you seven p's as we look at the seven pitfalls of the prophet remember that this presentation this mentorship that is being done is being done using the acronym Prophet. So on Monday night, we used the P and we spoke about on Monday night the seven principles of the prophetic. We talk about the principle of, 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 of speaking, hearing, seeing, feeling, doing, knowing, and warfare. And um, then we looked at on Tuesday night the seven the R, the seven, the seven roles and realms of the prophet. And then last night, we did the O, the seven operations or moods of the prophet. So tonight, we're going to be doing the P. And that is going to be now the seven pitfalls of the prophet. All right? So get your pens ready. Get your paper ready. Because we're going to be going into it momentarily. And, uh, um, and we're going to dive into some juicy substance on tonight. Get your Bible close to you as well. That you may want to take some notes and uh, get into it. Um, this is a free prophetic mentorship coming to you live right here on Facebook. On my website, we offer a prophetic course that we call the Art of the Prophetic. 
that is over a hundred dollars for that course and um, God have so inspired me to um, do this on, on 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 Facebook so as to bring some bring some 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 structure some order some correction and uh, some revelation on the on the on the on the matter of the prophetic it is a super gift as i've said god says desire spiritual gift but above all that you may prophesy because the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy all right so we're going to be going into it now so let us just enter into a time of prayer father i thank you and i praise you for this awesome responsibility that you have afforded to me one more time that i can come and lift up your name on social media and that i can be a blessing to your people as they jump on and as they view this broadcast lord i pray for all my viewers tonight that everything that i will see will be said and done to your glory and that they'll receive information revelation for transformation for your lives so let the words that you have given to me be like a potent seed coming from my mouth that it may drop in the hearts of your people germany and bring forth fruit in their lives. Let your word from my mouth be like a sharp to edit sword that it may cut and divide soul and spirit, bone and marrow and become a, 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 a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Let your word from my mouth be like a consuming fire burn up the shaft. Let your word abound. Let your word increase. Let your word be accompanied with signs and wonders following. Let everyone that is on this telecast receive impartation and receive a supernatural downloads. Father, let the prophetic become real to them that when they have heard that their spirits will be stirred and that they'll be activated for the prophetic in jesus mighty name and everybody say amen 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 praise the lord so tonight we're going to be looking at uh, the seven pitfalls of the prophet the seven pitfalls of the prophet hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord jesus the seven pitfalls of the prophet we're going to be doing a, a, a exposition of uh, second peter chapter 2 so i'm going to go into that chapter and i'm going to pull out some nuggets and some and some truths that i believe is going to um transform your life so if you have your bibles you can get ready to turn with me there in second peter chapter 2 and so because my wife is not here on tonight I'm going to be doing the reading myself. So I want you to bear with me as we get into the scripture and look at the seven, the seven pitfalls of the prophet. Seven things the prophet's the prophet and the prophetic must, have, must avoid. All right. Number one pitfall of the prophet is what I call perniciousness. Perniciousness. Mm -hmm. P-E-R-N-I-C-I-O-U-S. N-E-S-S. -S. Perniciousness. You may you may ask me the question, what does that word mean, perniciousness? It actually means, and these are some synonyms for this word, harmful, damaging, destructive, hurtful, poisonous. And I could have gone on to mention some more concerning this word and what it is in terms of the very context of that word, perniciousness so let's get ready to understand what the bible is you're saying let me give you one and two more um one and two more synonyms for this word it is it means injurious detrimental deleterious dangerous adverse unhealthy unfavorable bad evil baleful wicked malign noxious malignant those are some those are some some synonyms of the word pernicious so let's look at the bible verse and see uh how a prophet can become pernicious and why he should avoid this pitfall of becoming pernicious the bible tells us here in second peter chapter 2 and verse 2 make note of that right now and let me read that verse to you it says and many will follow their pernicious ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed or evil spoken of. So what has happened is that there have been many prophets who have given a, a bad name to the prophetic. They have allowed many persons um, to speak uh, evil of the way 
of truth. And what has happened is that uh, they have become poisonous. And so it is very important for us to understand if you're a man of God and you invite a prophet to your church and after he has left that the people are poisoned by his, prof by his prophetic, um, he sets up members against members and members against their pastors. Or you find that there is a, a sense of destructive and, and erroneous teachings that comes out of his mouth that creates a, a kind of heresy that leads people and, and you see, there are some people, they will end up following the prophet mindlessly, that they will not be persons that will able to um, heed to sound doctrine. And so one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the, um, the, 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 the pitfalls here is uh, the pernicious ways, you know, the pernicious ways. A prophet must be careful. If you get a revelation from God, don't just be running with that revelation, so to speak. Make sure that that revelation lines up with the word of God because God will not be contrary and will not speak contrary of his word. It therefore means that it must be confirmed through scriptures. And if you're unable to handle the substance of what God has given to you or or what you're interpreting, that find somebody who is more seasoned in the word that they can help to give you some balance. But there have been many prophets. Uh, they just get something and they run with it. And what has happened is that they have ended up in the process uh, creating all kinds of problems and all kinds of situations that has harmed the body of Christ and have given people evil to speak of. And the sad reality is that many persons have run after these pernicious ways. Some prophets, they have some tricks and some gimmicks and it, 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 it allows some things to happen that will give the, a bad reflection. That is why sometimes you go into a meeting and you announce yourself as a prophet and people begin to look at you funny because of something that has been happening in the prophetic. But tonight, uh, if you are listening to me and you are in that and you are in that ministry, in the prophetic ministry, you must be careful not to go in the pernicious way. And if you are listening to me but you are not in the prophetic, you must not follow a prophet in his pernicious ways, in the ways that is poisonous and destructive and harmful. Sometimes there are prophets they will come into a church and they will embarrass people and people be wounded by the prophetic because of things that they may say, lies that they may even speak in their prophecy that cause persons now to be given a different... You see, can you imagine a man of God comes to your church, he calls you out and prophesies and tell you something and you are there before him and you can't deny it because all of that and then at the end of it, you feel embarrassed by all of what was said. Now, it's important for us to understand that this is a pitfall that we have to, we have to avoid. For a matter of fact, hear what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah made a very powerful statement concerning the problem that we're facing. Because some of what is happening in the prophetic, the people are to be blamed. The people that follow the prophet, they are to be blamed. Because they are the ones that are following his pernicious ways. Let me show you what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 5 and verse 31. It is a predicament. Um in terms of the cry of God concerning his people. Here in Jeremiah 5 and verse 31. Make a note of that and follow me in the scriptures as we read um, from Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 31. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And hear what it says. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power. And the people love to have it so. But what will be the end thereof? The people love to have it so. There are some people, all they want the prophet is to prophesy. Even if he's prophesying lies, they just want him climb up, climb up, you know, and, and all of that. And uh, they will run after everybody that seems to have a word. You have to be very... very uh, you have to be very careful. You have to be very, be very careful. Don't run after things that... You see, this has happened because the Bible says that many is many will run because they have itching ears. And some people end up following their pernicious ways, not because they are rebellious, but because of their simplicity. In 2 Samuel 15 and verse 11, it was, it was Absalom that rose up against his father. And the Bible says that 300 men that was in David camp, followed Absalom in their simplicity. Sometimes people end up following a prophet or following a movement in their simplicity. They don't know the truth and the revelation. Their eyes are blinding. 
and uh, they are missing the mark. So that's one of the, one of the ways, one of the things a prophet must avoid. He must avoid the pernicious ways. Perniciousness is something that, that, that is a pitfall for the prophetic. We have seen many prophets who have uh, fell in that error. They have, they, they, they have, they have, they have erroneous teachings. They have, uh, they have, they have poisoned people against people. They have poisoned, they have poisoned uh, members against their pastors. They have, they have, they, they have done things that um, after they leave that ministry, the church is in a, 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 a woeful state, a baleful manner. So God wants us to, to, to make sure that we, we, we don't miss it. So this is the first, the first um, pitfall that we want to address. Pitfall number one, perniciousness. Pitfall number two, get back with me. Remember that we are excavating the scripture in First Peter chapter two. So get back there and let us go a little deeper in First Peter chapter two as we go to the following verse, which is verse three. And thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm over in First Peter. So let's go back. Second Peter chapter two and verse three. It says, "By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not." being idle. Listen, it says here, by covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. The next, the next, the next pitfall of the prophetic is what I call now prostitution. Prostitution. It means the prophet has to be very careful that he does not become a prophetic prostitute, that he does not prostitute the prophetic, that he does not end up missing the mark of what God um, wants him to understand concerning the, the, the function of his office as a prophet. Ah, greed and, 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 and prophesying out of that wrong motive can affect the office of the prophet. And so some prophet have ended up prostituting his office. That's what the Bible says in Micah 3 and verse 11. And that you must make this note, Micah 3 and verse 11. Micah 3 verse 11. It said that my prophets, that they prophesy for hire. They prophesy for money. And so, I am not saying every prophet prophesy for money. I am not saying that a prophet must not raise offering. But what I'm saying is that there are prophets that have a motive that is not right. Which means that in them, there is a sense of covetousness. And they will use deceptive words, charming words, flattering words to exploit people and so that's the thing that if you're a prophet you have to avoid going through that um i'm um, 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 falling into that pit into that pit you have to break that pitfall from your life. For a matter of fact, we see that there are some prophets who have become leprous in the prophetic. They are like Gehazi, the, 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 the prophetic son of Elisha. You see, Elisha, um, the prophet, um, the king, the, 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 the captain near man came to him. He was a uh, man that had leprosy. And he came to Elisha because he heard that Elisha had the power for healing. And Elisha gave him command to go and dip himself seven times in the Jordan. The man was healed and delivered. When he got healed, the, the, the captain came to Elisha and he brought gold and silver and all kind of precious things and he wanted to bless the prophet. But the prophet did not feel the prompting of God to receive that blessing. So the prophet sent him on his way. As he was going, Gehazi uh, said to himself, uh, uh, my papa is joking. My papa is joking. Why have you let this man go and not pay? This man need to sow. This man need to give. And what he did was that he went after Nehemiah in the chariot and stopped him and then used his father's name and said, Elisha have sent me to so collect from you that you must give him the goods that you wanted to, that he has reconsidered that he's sorry, he sent you away and he wants you. To, and then he collected from, 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 um, from near man. By the time he went back home, the Bible said that Elisha said to him, did not my heart go out? And so when you approached Naaman and took the money from him in the chariot, why have you done this? The leprosy that is upon Naaman shall come upon you. There are some prophets, they are leprous. Some prophets, what they have done, they have gone behind their father's back and they have tried to extort their father's connection. They try to connect with people that are connected to their father so they can gain advantage. This is something that has spoiled some people in the prophetic. Do not fall into that pit. Do not fall into that pit if, if, if your father or if your pastor invites it's a man of God to your church. Don't go behind the man back and begin to try to uh, wheel yourself into that person's connection. Make sure that you do things in proper protocol. It is very important uh, for us to understand these principles I am teaching here. So number two in the prophetic is prostitution. And next thing the prophet must be careful of is that, he should, that, that people don't use him 
and prostitute his gift and make him into a spiritual prostitute. Listen to me. I have learned my lesson very well. I have seen some people, they are like, they are like, they are like prophetic pimps. What they do is that they see men of God who are anointed and then they will bring them in and use those men of God to raise offerings for them. And then what they will do is that at the end of it, that they will, <laughs> they will turn against the man of God and break their contract with the man of God and then speak evil about him. I remember I had a very good friend and this friend, this friend, uh, uh, invited me to come to his church uh, because he was planning to buy this building that his church was now located in. He said, Bishop, I'm going to come and, and help me to raise some money so I can buy this building. I believe that the man conditioned this congregation and people know that it is that they want to purchase the building. Ah, uh, lo and behold, when I went and I was now helping the man to raise the money, ah, uh, uh, at, at the end of the meeting, the man sent one of his assistants to me with a love offering. When I was trying to call him and call other people that was connected to the ministry, nobody took my call. I later found out that under his instruction, he, he told the people to block me and to block my number. And then told the people that all I was, all I, uh, all I was about was about the money. Oh, I felt prostituted. I felt betrayed because what the man told the people was that he already buy the building. And so the people thought that they were in a building that was already purchased but here is it now that the man called me to raise money the next thing that happened is that when when people use you like that and set you up like that next time you go into town other people will not come to your meeting because they have put a bad image on your outside be careful of the kind of arrangement that you make with men of God if you're in the prophetic don't allow anybody to prostitute your prophetic gift you see you you, you have to avoid this pitfall avoid the pitfall of being a prophetic prostitute people prostitute in you and you using your gift to exploit and prostitute people it is a pitfall that can lead into dangerous problems in your life all right so that is number two hallelujah and so if you want the reference that i think i didn't give that one to you about Nehemiah who be, uh, and, and, and 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 gehazi who became leprous that is second kings chapter 5 and verse 26 and verse 27 so you can make a note of that that um that's the you can't prostitute uh, your, uh, prostitution is the second pitfall that you must avoid pitfall number three pitfall number three is presumptuousness 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 oh my god a prophet has to be very careful of presumptuousness huh presumptuousness is a dangerous 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 matter we look at verse 10 verse 10 of first of second peter chapter 2 verse 10 we are we are we are we are, we are doing an exposition right here and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the loss of uncleanness and despise authority you know what it says now here is it they are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. They are presumptuous, self-willed. There are some prophets the Lord have not spoken, but they, they have gone and they have gone ahead to, spoke, to speak. Listen to me. This is one of the things that you have to avoid very much in the prophetic. Um, <laughs> if God is not speaking, don't feel the pressure that you must prophesy. And so there are some people who have ended up in that problem of uh, feeling the pressure and then become presumptuous. I want to invite you to turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 13. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 3. When you have found it, just say, bam. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying this myself. Ezekiel chapter 13. Uh, so presumptuousness is one of the things that the Lord has warned us about and that God has taken this thing very seriously. And here the warning that God gave to the people through the prophet Ezekiel. And it says, And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have not seen nothing. So what God was saying is that there are some prophets who are following their own spirit. They have not seen anything. And they are presumptuous. And they be careful of somebody who always have a word for you. Be careful of somebody who always tell you, God told me. You know, God told me this, or I heard the Lord, I, I heard the Lord. Be careful and be weary of such. 
Because such can become prophets who are presumptuous, prophets who are prophesying out of their own spirit. For a matter of fact, if you go down to verse 6, I don't know why I'm, I, 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 if you go down to verse 6 of Ezekiel 13, it gives you an extra profound thing right there. It says, they have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them. Yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. Which means that there are some people, they come to you and they prophesy, and they're looking for you to confirm the word. And then some people now, in the error of their ways, try now to confirm the word that the prophet spoke. So they go out of their way to try to make the word come to pass. Huh? 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 And then there are some prophets now, they want you to agree with them. This is, this is dangerous things. These are dangerous things I'm speaking about. So one of the things that the prophet must avoid is a pitfall, is presumptuousness. Make sure that the Lord is the one who has spoken. Sometimes you don't sure if the Lord is speaking. You can say to somebody, I believe the Lord is saying. Don't be always, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. Uh, just say the Lord, just say the Lord. And you know, those things can be, can be, can fall under, and then sometimes they end up giving people false hope and then to destroy them, destroy your faith in the process. And so that is the next pitfall of the prophetic. So let us look at what we have covered so far. We said number one is pernicious ways. Those, those are prophets that uh, have some hurt that they're operating from and they're prophesying out of that wound. Probably they were brought up in, a, in an environment that was an hostile environment. Probably they were hurt by their spiritual father. Probably there's something that is there that you're still ministering out of that pain. And so they end up poisoning people wherever they go. Um, and people end up following their pernicious ways. And because of what they're doing, they have allowed the office of the prophetic to be evil spoken of. All right, then there are persons who are prostituting the prophetic that they have gone on to use deceptive words so that they can exploit people. And that is the next danger of the prophetic. And those same people sometimes end up being used by other people and are prostit that prostitute their gift. The next thing is presumptuousness, that there are people who are running ahead and giving false vision, saying the Lord told me this, the Lord showed me this, I had a dream of you last night, I saw you this, and, and all of those things are presumptuous. Those are pitfalls the prophet must avoid. Hallelujah. Why don't you continue to share and invite people to hear what I'm about to say as we continue this broadcast, as we continue to delve into this matter about the prophetic and looking at the pitfalls of the prophetic. All right. So number four pitfall of the prophetic is pretense. 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 There are some prophets that are pretending to have the prophetic gift. But what they are doing is mimicking other prophets. What they are doing is that they are boasting themselves of a false gift. They have watched people flow in the prophetic and uh, they are excited by how they flow. And then all they do was just to mimic what they have seen. And uh, some people operate in that spirit of pretense. This is very important for us to understand. I'm going to show you verse 13, verse 13 of 2 Peter chapter 2. Remember, we are digging this thing. We are digging into this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, they are spots and blemishes, corrosing in their own deceptions while they feast among you. While they feast among you. It means that these people, they come like rain clouds, full of showers. But the truth is, they have no water. Proverbs 25 and verse 14 says, a man that boasts of a false gift is like a cloud without water and without wind. So what happened is that a true prophet is always pregnant with the prophetic rivers that will flow in the prophetic. And what happened is that when people put pressure upon that prophetic cloud that he carries, his prophetic will begin to rain on them. But what is happening is that people uh, that have a false gift, they don't have the showers, so what they try to do is to create a hype in the environment and to get people to get excited and to shout and to scream and, uh, you know, and to go up and all of that. And at the end of it, what is happening is that they are both of a false gift. 
Some people, they're not really hearing. We live in an information age where people can source information about people and speak back those things to them. And so what happened is that there are persons who operate that they are in the prophetic. They did not hear from the Lord. All they have done is background checks. And it has, it, and some people, to their embarrassment, it has caught upon them. That's why you have to be careful about the prophetic and how we can affect somebody as they flow. I hope I'm helping somebody. I'm hope I'm helping somebody. I'm hope I'm helping somebody. I'm hope I hope I'm helping somebody to understand how to avoid. Here, make note of this. Make note of this. Jeremiah 48 and verse 10. It says, it says, curse is a man that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Ah, uh, there are some people, they are they are they are great pretenders. They are they, they don't they love the prophetic and they desire to be prophets, but the truth is they are not in the prophet's office. And so they go around and they title themselves prophet this and prophetess that. And then in their presumption, they always have a word for somebody. We have to be very careful concerning these matters. That is why don't have itching ears. That is why the Bible says, all of us, we must judge the prophecies that God has given us a spirit that can bear witness if what is saying is coming from God or what is saying is coming from the flesh. There are some things that I will do and tell you how to judge prophecies and how to determine if this person is speaking the word of the Lord. The problem is that we have three different kind of listeners, people that will listen to receive. We have those who are the listeners that they listen because of who is saying what, you know. So if you are, if you, if you have a name already, anything you say, you are God. You cannot miss. Some people they just listen. They will say, "Well, prophet so and so said this." So they are persons who are regarders, regarders of persons. All right, and then you have um, those who listen. Mm -hmm. To how you're speaking what? Which means that these people, they can become offended if you don't have the proper words, the proper English, the proper pronunciation, enunciation. They are turned off. Then there are people who listen for what is being said. You know, what? And you judge the what. And next time I will give you the, 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 the revelation on how to judge your prophecies. Probably later down, later on down in the, in the broadcast, I will do that. But we are looking now at the pitfalls. And we said that one of the pitfalls that we just pointed out is a pitfall of deception. The pitfall that we call pretense. All right. If you go on further down in Second Peter 2, let's catch verse 14. Verse 14 have some information for us. Verse 14 says... Their, their heart have they trained unto covetous practices. They are accursed children. Um, this, is, this, is, this is dangerous information that is being downloaded to us here. Jesus warns us that they will come, that there will be even some who have learned what we call the tricks and the trick of the prophet. I know a prophet that, um, you know, he, he know how to reel up a crowd. There are things that he could do to call the tricks and the trades of the prophet. You know, things that he could do to make smoke appear or to make fire appear. And the people would not know that it was not something that was happening divinely. It was something that was being orchestrated by the prophet so as to draw attention and to get the people in a moment of excitement and, 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 and bliss. These are things that we have to um we have to be very careful as we as we as we look at the, 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 the revelations that are coming to us um tonight out of the scriptures. So let's get into the word of the Lord as we continue. So number one, perniciousness, number two, prostitution, number three, presumptuous. Number four, we said pretense. The Lord told us that they will come in that way and they will come in that way to deceive many. All right. Number five, which is a very dangerous one, is a pros, um, pros, pro, <laughs> I've always have a problem pronouncing this word. Promiscuity, promiscuity, promiscuity. Promiscuity, promiscuity. That's number seven. Let's go to verse 14. I know Prophet Chris will bring up back verse 14 on the screen so you can see it. And in verse 14 of 2 Peter chapter 2, it says, Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sinning, enticing unstable souls. The next problem and the next pitfall a prophet can fall, in, can fall into is the problem 
of uh, promiscuity, immorality. Greed and immorality are traps that can dangerously affect the prophetic. And that is why those who have stood in the prophet's office have had some serious challenges, especially in their marital relationships. And uh, um, we have seen a lot of problem that has taken place. And, and friends, I don't want us to be very hard on the prophets in this regard, because many of us must understand certain principles and certain contexts. And what I want to tell you is that Jezebel is always after the prophets. They are targeted. Jezebel hates the prophetic. In in Genesis, in, in, in Revelation 2 and verse 20. Revelation 2 and verse 20. And I'm sure the prophet, Prophet Chris, will bring up that on the screen as well for you to see it with your own eyes. And in Revelation 2 and verse 20, there is something that was mentioned concerning Jezebel and concerning the works of Jezebel and the intention that she has in the church. And hear what, the, hear what the Lord says here in verse 20. In a minute from now, I'm going to begin to flow. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things offered to idols. Listen to me and hear me very well that um, the prophetic um, prophet Jezebel is after the prophets and what Jezebel wants to do is that Jezebel wants to seduce the prophets so that they can go into immorality and to and to and to go into idol worship it is very important for us to understand that we must pray for our prophets that we must cover them and shield them that we must uh, uh, lift them up before God because Jezebel it's the prophetic and Jezebel wants to kill the prophets. And that is why so many of our prophets have been falling into immorality, have been falling into serious problems concerning their sexual life. Some have gone so deep into it that they cannot recover themselves. They have become and further on down is what is what is what is said now by the same Peter in this chapter. If we look now at verse 18. Verse 18 of 2 Kings, chapter 2. Verse 18 of 2 Kings. Sorry, verse 18 of 2 Peter. Verse 18 of 2 Peter, chapter 2, gives us another shocking revelation concerning what happens in the prophetic. It says, uh, For they speak great swelling words of emptiness. They allure through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness of what the the King James called wantonness. The ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Listen to me, and um, Prophet Chris will bring it up at the second t um, Peter chapter 2 and verse 18. What happened right there is that he can now move. There's, everybody may have a stronghold, they may have a weakness, they may have a challenge that they are challenged with. But what is happening is that some now can fall so deep that they are unable to recover themselves. And then they enter into a next problem now of wantonness, lewdness, which means that they have gone into a state of depravity um, in their sexual. And so there have been some prophets that have left trails of blood everywhere that they have gone. They have made a mess of their reputation and have made a mess of the prophetic office. I am not here judging prophets. I'm here speaking the word of the Lord so that we can have a clarity in terms of how we move and how we discern because it's important that we understand these truths and these principles so that we don't end up in that problem. The Bible says those who escape from them are those who are pure in heart because uh, people are attracted to power. And the Bible says that they go and they, and they, and they try to um, sneer and entrap those souls. Eh? And 2 Timothy 3 and verse 6 tells us, that there are men that goes around beguiling unstable souls, silly women. And, and so they look for women sometimes who are, who are, who are vulnerable, um, who are looking for a husband, looking for somebody to love. And uh, they can use, and sometimes they'll be careful of some of the Facebook prophets that comes on and then they begin to, um, you know, get your information and, 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 and plan clandestine meetings that they're going to come to marry you and all kind of things. This can be, uh, these are some dangerous things. I have had some people who have approached members of my church uh, wanting to marry to them because they are prophets from here, prophet from there. I said, who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? I am your prophet. 
Hallelujah. Anyway, I don't want to sound arrogant on Facebook here tonight. But we need to clean up something that is happening. And some people need to understand how not to fall in those pits. These are the pitfalls of the prophetic. So we have to avoid the pitfalls of the prophetic. Don't be running to everyone that you see on Facebook that title themselves prophet. There are some people that are there and they are saying they are prophet and they don't even have a church. They don't have a ministry. They are only Facebook prophets. Oh, I'm sounding too harsh. I, I, think, I, I think I'm hitting this thing too hard. Forgive me. Ah, we need to understand that there are persons, they have not been authorized. They were never released. Nobody laid hands on them and released them and sent them out. They have been presumptuous prophets. They take the title attached to themselves and they begin to do this thing and call themselves. People be very careful. Be very careful lest you become this, lest you be destroyed because of their pernicious ways. Lest you be hurt because of their pernicious ways. Lest you be poisoned. Some people are still recovering from the hurts of prophets. They have been, they have been hurt. They have been wounded. Now you go now as a, as a, as a, as a true man of God and you are ministering to these people and they put you in the same category. And so you know people will not receive you because of what a prophet did the last time. If you ever say to the people, let's sow a seed. I'm asking everybody to give a hundred dollars tonight. Oh, you see, you see, you see. And the same problem. But you cannot throw out the baby. With the bath water that's a problems we have here in jamaica you know we have to understand the value what you see as a counterfeit is only evidence that the real exists hallelujah let's go into some other things quickly as time goes so i can take some good questions here tonight so we said promiscuity can be a dangerous thing and people can be led out led astray and a prophet can fall into this area and he has to be very careful that is why you know you have to try to guard yourself and surround yourself and protect yourself from uh, making some problem and to, and, and, and to mess up hallelujah glory be to god number six number six number six pitfall of the prophetic is pride 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 wow pride let's talk about pride for a minute we go back to verse 18 of second peter chapter 2 and verse 18 says for when they speak they speak swelling words swelling words hey there are some prophets there is a look that they carry even while they are prophesying it is a proud look there are some prophets that have what you call an elitist spirit they surround themselves um, with bodyguards. You can't even get to them if you are if you're to call them. No, I, I don't want to hit them too hard. If you are to call, you have to go to 10 or 50 people in order to get to them. I know sometimes we have to, we have to, you know, but, 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 but there are people that you can see the mark of pride that is on them. I, I, I'm taken to remember this story. Take note of this. Second Kings 22. I want to look at two verses in that passage, verse 11 and verse 24. What's the context in that, in that passage? It was Ahab. He was going to war as a king of, uh, 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 of, Syria, uh, of Samaria. And then there was Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. So the two kings of Israel met together because they were faced by a powerful enemy. And so Jehoshaphat now asks... Is there a prophet that we can inquire of before we go to war? So the king Ahab called all of his prophets, the prophets that have sold out, prophets that he have bought, prophets that is under his, his control. And there was one called Zedekiah. When he came, he came with the horns and he said, Thus, verse 11, shall you break them? Go to battle. The Lord has given you victory. But there was something in the spirit of of, 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 of Jehoshaphat, who was a man of God. And Jehoshaphat said, is there yet not another prophet? I feel like something is off. And so the king reluctantly said, yes, there is one other prophet. His name is Mayaka. But he never prophesied anything good about me. You know, because there are some people, all they want is good prophecy. They want you to always... <laughs> I am sad. They want you to prophesy them happy. You go, you see these people at prophetic service and they jump from one line to the next line. Listen to me. So the man said he never speak anything good. So Joshua Fat said, send for him. So they sent for Mayaka. Mayaka um, began to jeer them and said, well, yeah, you'll go to war. You'll win the battle. Yeah. Then the king said, have I not told you that you must tell me the truth and do not hide anything from me? Then Mayaka said to, to the king, listen to me. The Lord showed me that he have sent a lying spirit 
in the mouths of the prophets that they will prophesy a lie that you will go to the battle and you will die. Ahab said, I tell you that this man has nothing good to prophesy about me. <laughs> then, a little interruption there. The same prophet Zedekiah that had the horn, the Bible said that he went over and he smote plow. Jamaica would have said, give my box. And he said in verse 24, From whence went the Spirit of the Lord from me unto you? There are some prophets that believe, Only me alone, I am the major one. I am the major prophet. Eh? I am the major prophet. From whence went the Spirit of the Lord from me to you? And so they will not even take advice from somebody else. I, this is a proud spirit. When a prophet believes that he is always right. And that he's never off. This is a proud spirit. When a prophet begin to speak bad about other prophets and put down other prophets because they want them to look bad and for themselves to look good. This is these things is a pitfall. A prophet must be careful he doesn't fall into. Listen to me personally. I will address some things from a scriptural point of view, but you'll never hear me speak badly about a man of God. I try to avoid that in name calling, keyboard warriors, um, exposing this, exposing that. You leave that alone loan mm -hmm. and so Zedekiah 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 smote Mayaka on the cheek as you see there in first Kings 22 and verse 23 smoke him on the cheek from whence from whence went the spirit of the Lord <laughs> from me unto you huh so pride is the next dangerous thing that the prophet must avoid uh, I'm going quickly the last one number seven number seven number seven is uh, the last um, pitfall that I want to share that the prophet must avoid. Let's go to verse 12 of 2 Kings, of 2 Peter. Verse 12 of 2 Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. And in verse 12, it says, But these, like natural brute beasts, <coughs> made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand. And will utterly perish in their own corruption. These are natural brute beasts. The next problem or the next thing a prophet must avoid. The next pitfall is a punitive nature. Punitive nature. Punitive nature. Uh, it means uh, that uh, these prophets have come to a place where they are harsh. Where they see things that they must punish judgment all of that natural brute beasts these are people that will take others and destroy them these are people that if you are not careful and you connect with them for too long they will suck you dry you will become nothing they'll be so hard on you they'll be so harsh on you you become almost like a servant and like a slave to them. These people raise up their own mindless cult of people following them blindly ah may god give us grace to have discernment in this time and in this season because uh, i have seen that there are some men of god who are merciless even to their members merciless and um it is it is it is something that we have to understand uh, these this 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 pretty this, this punitive nature like natural brute beasts the anger the anger the way in which they speak the arrogance the way in which they speak oh god i have i have i have been in circles i have had experiences i have seen i have seen i have seen prophets who have smote their sons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because their sons were out the line smote them like Zedekiah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Natural brute beast. In Jamaica, we will say brute. He's a brute. And there are some prophets, they are brute. Brute beast. Oh, I don't want to sound um, as if I'm here cursing prophets or cursing the prophetic. The, 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 the teaching tonight is to expose the seven pitfalls of the prophet. And from this teaching, you would have already identified and you would have already seen that there are persons that you may have come across who have fallen in into, into these pitfalls. Persons who have become pernicious. They have erroneous teaching and strange kind of things that they, that they say that God told them to do and all of that. You may have seen some of them that is 
you know, prostituting their gift that, you know, they're all about the money. They just come to preach you happy, take an offering and go. You may see that some may have a, a presumptuous nature. They are just speaking. They always have a word. They are always in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And they end up mixing the prophetic and, you know, all of that. Then you may have seen some who are pretenders that they act as if God has spoken to them when all they have done is gotten background information and what they have done is talk to your friends and heard something about you and come back and say it as if God had spoken to them when they are gossiping on the telephone. Ah, pretenders who may have even set up a false testimony for themselves to look good. You may have seen persons who have come to the place also where they are promiscuous um, that their eyes are full of adultery. Everywhere they go, they make a mess. Uh, you may have seen problems in the prophetic where pride is concerned, where there are some prophets you cannot speak to them, you cannot approach them, that there's an arrogance, that they believe that they are the greatest prophets, the greatest prophet in the world, and every other prophet is a false prophet. You may have seen people who have punitive nature in the prophetic, they are like natural brute beasts. They are very harsh, very harsh, very coarse. <sighs> Hallelujah. Tonight, uh, it is with uh, a, a, a sense also of, you know, um, pain and burden that I speak and talk about these these seven pitfalls because i see countless people who have been wounded because of these pitfalls intercessors we must now begin to rise up and pray pray for the prophets those who are going into the prophetic and you take on this prophetic name and put title on you be very careful because the day you call yourself a prophet, you have made yourself a target for Jezebel. And Jezebel is going to look to search you out if there is greed and immorality in your life. And then will make you to sit at her table and eat. Uh, don't run after things that God has not called you to. If you are here and you are listening to me on this and on this on this on this broadcast masuka rabas opondoshe rabandebe and you may have been affected one way or the other to the prophetic forgive release and let go if a prophet came and you sowed a big seed and you feel as if you were raped by the prophet remember when you gave that seed you did not give it to a man you give it unto god so stop complaining get over it and get into the place where you begin to pray and ask God for greater discernment that you may try the spirit. Not to be suspicious, but not to just run after everything that you see and everything that fact that, that seem to be explosive. There are some people they are from one prophet to a next prophet, from one place. What? The Lord will have us to understand, especially in this season, that you know is restoring because Jesus is coming back soon. And there's going, to be a, there's going to be a release in the prophetic. There's going to be a supernatural release. I see it in the realm of the spirit that there is a chirping of eagles. Eagles are about to raise up and fly. Eagles are about to soar. I see prophetic eagles rising up. I see a company. Before Jesus came, God sent John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah to prepare the way for him. Before Jesus come back, he's going to raise up an Elijah company. He's going to raise up some men of God, some fathers who will turn the heart of the children back to their fathers and the heart of the children back and the heart of the fathers back to their children. This is the hour where God is great is raising up people with prophetic order as prophetic mentor that carries an Elijah mantra. Ah, mazoko rabazata. I feel this thing. Mashukata zaba. Ekurama. In my time of prayer this morning, as I was seeking the Lord. I'm saying, Lord, what can I do? How can I help? 
Uh, how can you use me as a vessel of change to help to bring transformation to the lives of those who truly wants to walk in the prophetic and who want to walk in it in the in the in the in, in the integrity of the office? How do I? How do I? How do I? How do I help? And I, I cried out unto God, and I, I heard in my spirit, and I asked God. I said, God, well, if it's you, if it's you that is saying this to me. Then let it come to pass. And I hear in my spirit that I must raise up a company of a Gideon 300. A Gideon 300 company. There are 300 people that I want to mentor this year. That I want to pour into their life. That I want to prepare as eagles from all over the world. Whether you're in Barbados, whether you're in Trinidad, whether you're in Kenya, wherever you are. If you have listened to this broadcast on a delayed and not on the live wherever you are if there is a conviction in your spirit that you believe that there is a prophetic gift in your life but you want that prophetic gift to be properly cultured and nurtured and watered and you want that prophetic gift to come to a next level and you want a prophetic man of god a father a papa who can speak into your prophetic womb and who can decree some things then i want to i want to encourage you i want to encourage you if that is something that you desire I want to encourage you. I'm making myself available. I feel the burden of the Lord in this area. And so I am doing a special prophetic mentorship program. Uh, when I started this on Monday night, it was just a way of giving back, you know, of myself and the knowledge that God has given to me. But then as I started to go deeper, the burden of the Lord came unto me. I'm holding back myself from tears tonight because I believe to whom much is given, much is expected. And I want to help to impact some people's life. And so, if you are one of those persons who have that conviction, I want you to go to my website. Prophet Chris is going to put some information. It's right there on the screen. You'll go to the place on my website where there is contact. And right on the contact, you will see something that he has created on the website there, the Gideon 300 Mentorship. All I need from you is just your name and your email address. All right. What we will do is that we will respond to you and tell you how and what this mentorship will, will be about and how we can help you in the process. So if you are very interested in that matter, if you want to be a part of the, 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 the Gideon 300, the, 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 the prophetic company that is rising up in this season and in this time, if you want somebody to help you and to coach you along the way and to give you some insights, then go to my website, you can do it and just sign up your name and your email address and just say i want to be a part of the gideon 300 how can i be a part all we need for now is your name and your email and then we'll go into what i believe the lord will lay on our hearts and uh, set out um the programs and uh, make personal access and how i can speak into your life and how i can be a greater blessing to you in uh, the ways that the lord will have me to Oh, hallelujah. I enjoy this time of teaching, not as I enjoyed last night and the night before, you know, but I believe that I have done some justice in bringing some clarity to some people. If you believe that this tele this broadcast has blessed you and have made some things clearer in your mind, why don't you share the link with your friends? Why don't you invite other persons to come on because each night is going to get better it's going to get deeper it's going to get richer why don't you um push and if you believe that you have been fed by the word of the lord and that you want to be a blessing back to the prophet because i can tell you something jezebel is after the prophets but god is looking for some obedias uh, some obedias obedias was a governor but when jezebel was killing the prophet obedias hid a hundred prophet for three and a half years and fed them food every day. It said bread and water, but the bread mean food. He fed a hundred prophets for three years. One man, one man. Yet sometimes there is one prophet in a church with 300 members and the one prophet is not fed. May God raise you up also as an Obadiah that you can help to cover the prophets, pray for them because Jezebel is after them. Don't judge them. You know, just see the pitfalls and avoid and don't follow their pernicious ways. Don't let them prostitute you. Don't let them be a brute beast over you. These are revelations from the bishop. 
I'm going to take a time out now to see if I can entertain some questions that you may have because time has run up so quickly on us. All right, so go ahead and begin to shoot your question. I am going to be assisted with my with, with, with Prophet Chris, that is my technical assistant, the person that angles and manages my website, one of my spiritual sons. Well, he's the firstborn among many brethren. All right, so um, <coughs> right there. So, so, so. I always pray for all men of God and women. All right. Thank you, Michelle. So you keep on praying for me, right? Thank you. Blessed be the Lord. All right. So we are looking for some questions now. If you have a question that you want to ask, even if it does not relate to specifically what we taught tonight or what we um, released tonight on this broadcast, then um, let's, 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 there's any questions about the prophetic that you want clarity, we will take them. Hallelujah. So yes, Anne Marie, you're a daughter. And let me just tell you that on Friday, the 1st of February, if you're in the Kingston area, I am going to be at the Eastwood Park, New Testament Church of God. The Eastwood Park, New Testament Church of God on the 1st of February, Friday the 1st. So if you can't beat me there, meet me there. Because I'll be there by the grace of God. It's going to be a glorious explosion of power and, 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 and all of that. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that it's a little delayed, so I'm waiting for one and two more questions. One and two questions to come. Please note that um, if you want to, to be a blessing, you can go and you can touch the link. That is, be, that is provided for the PayPal. If you want to just say, man of God, you have blessed me so much. I just want to be a blessing to you. I just want to be an Obadiah and just bless you in return. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What time? All right. I'm not sure what that question is connected to. Okay. All right. Welcome from St. Lucia. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Is the office of the prophet different from being called a prophet? Um, no. Let me just say, a prophet is one that operates in the office of a prophet. You can do the work of a prophet, which is to prophesy, but that does not make you a prophet. You can do the work of an evangelist, but that doesn't make you an evangelist. So what we must distinguish is the, 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 the work and the office. The office of the prophet is a five-fold ministry office, one of the part of the executive branch of the church. And last night I showed you by using my five fingers here on my left hand that the apostle is like the thumb. This left thing, this thumb can touch all the other fingers. So who, one who is an apostle can operate in a five-fold ministry. An apostle will flow in the prophetic, he will flow as an evangelist, he will flow as a pastor and as a teacher. That is the, the an apostle will operate like a five-fold minister. If not everybody are apostles, there are some people who call themselves they are apostles, but the apostle must be affirmed and approved with signs and wonders. So if there's no miracle that is happening in that person's life, that person is not a real apostle, even though they may carry the title. Number two, a prophet is the pointer. The evangelist goes the furthest. So he's at the soul winning. He goes all over. The pastor is the married, the one that stays home and takes care of the bride, the church. And the teacher goes into the intricate part and make the word clear to people. All right. Now, let me just say something quickly right here. That is not everybody that prophesies a prophet. And not because you're prophesying and you're always prophesying mean you must go around and call yourself prophet or call yourself prophetess. When you attach that name, that title to yourself, you attract attacks from Jezebel. So if God has not called you to that office, desist from calling yourself. Don't announce yourself. Let God announce you. All right? Let people begin to call you prophet. Let people begin to, you know, say that you are a man of God. All right? It, that, that, that's important. All right, there are some people, they are more interested in the title than in the office. So they just want the title prophet. The office is what is important, <clears throat> not just the title. If you don't address them by that title, they're offended. All right, I think I may have 
over answer that question is there any other question that you want me to 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 to, to focus on here tonight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hallelujah can we have prophets without a personal prayer life um as i said and tomorrow night we're gonna we're gonna we're going to address some things but a, 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 a prophet has to be an intercessor but not all intercessors are prophets if you are a prophet and you are not an intercessor you are not a real prophet so a prophet has to have a strong prayer life because that is the place where he hears from God and where God gives him download all right would one know if someone is a prophet by dreams and visions a person that can is having dreams and visions it is an indication that that person has a prophetic gift and that God will use that person in the prophetic and even as a prophet and so those are clear things a prophet must operate in the revelatory gifts a prophet must operate in word of knowledge which means that he must have uh, information and revelation that comes to him spontaneously about a person's past or present without prior knowledge he must have the gift of word of wisdom, which means that he can see and speak into the future. Or he must have the gift of discernment of spirits, which means that he must have the ability to see in the spiritual realm. Those are the three gifts that a prophet should have. There are some people, all they have is the gift of word of knowledge, which means that they can tell somebody about their past, but they really cannot correct things in the future and point somebody into the future. All right, so a true prophet will carry all these revelatory gifts in his life. Amen. Any other question? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to take five minutes more so I can, I can pour out some more of the knowledge that God has given to me um, to be a blessing to your life. And uh, I trust that you will never, never be the same. This is one of the questions the um, prophet is asking. Is a prophet born with the gift or can it be learned? All right. Um, there are some things that are taught and there are some things that are caught. I believe that a prophet has to be born a prophet. Other words, it is a call. It is something that you are chosen to do. It is God who calls you and appoints you. That is why God said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 18. He said, before you were in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet. You don't just learn to be a prophet. Nah. There are some things now that you have to learn how to become. It's as if, you know, some people born with the gift of singing, you know, and they go to voice training and they practice and they become better singers. In other words, you must enhance the gift. The Bible says that an axe head, if it is dull, it takes a lot of effort to cut the tree. But if it is sharpened by wisdom, listen, God has given all of us an edge. You must learn to sharpen your edge and you will have the edge in life. You have an edge that is a part of a puzzle. If you know where your edge fit, you will find yourself in the space that God has created for you. Don't force yourself into, into a space that God did not give you that edge for it. All right? So, once again, um, somebody's reminding before you go, sir, can we? Can you tell us again how to sign in? Um, Prophet Chris, bring up back that information. Go to my website. When you go to my website, Olive, you will see the contact um, button on my website. It's right there now. Clyde Chris is responding right there. And you will see Gideon 300 Mentorship. Sign up right there. Add your name and your email address. All right? Um, and, 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 and that will be a, that will be a, that will be a blessing. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus so these are some these are some teachings I'm gonna ask you to please pray for me as I continue with the remaining nights of this prophetic mentorship remember also that if you are interested in the book because what I'm teaching there are excerpts from the book all right so can you tell me why witchcraft affects some people <laughs> all right I missed that I wasn't able to bring it down all right, rewrite that question, bring it back in. Word of knowledge different to having a sharp discernment? Yes, word of knowledge and um, discernment. There's not a gift that is called discernment. Um, there are some people say that they, are, they, they have the gift of discernment. It is the discerning of spirits, which is the ability to see in the spiritual realm. 
all right? Discernment is something that is also a gift in itself, but it is not mentioned as one of the gifts of the spirit. It is a gift that is given to your human spirit, which means that a part of your human spirit has a function that is called intuition. It is in your intuition as a human that you have the ability to discern. You can sharpen your intuition because you can know how to strengthen your personal spirit. And next time I can do a training on that, how to train your spirit. You can train your spirit so your intuition becomes sharp. All right? But the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the gift for the discerning of spirit. Discernment comes from your human spirit. So you don't even have to be saved to be able to discern. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Jazz, for praying for me and the prophetess. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I hope I have answered your questions. I hope you have you have you have you have been blessed by 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 the by the by the broadcast. So remember to share this link with others so they can also hear the powerful information that you heard tonight. I am sure that clarity has come to you. All right. Praise the Lord. If you have a gift, does your conscience lead you to live? In um, Michelle, rephrase and let me get more. Yeah, um, holiness. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to come back to that. That was the question. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing I jump fast, you know, Lord Jesus. Yes, I soon learn, I soon be a better Facebooker, um, social media. Yeah, holiness is that requirement of the prophet and the prophetic. Um, it will help to strengthen and give your gift more power. Um, the person asks why some people are, why some people are affected by witchcraft and others are not. All right, um, some people are affected by witchcraft because there's altars that has been speaking against them, or because of a generational door that is in their life that give access to these witchcraft spirits to operate against them. All right, some people are affected by witchcraft because a witchcraft curse was pronounced on them others are not affected by witchcraft because there's no generational crack that is in their in their life to open a door to that kind of activity and they may have never been attacked by somebody who is casting spells or X's on them so the truth of the matter is that witchcraft can come against anybody it can come randomly there is one thing that is called a random witchcraft which means sometimes when a witch is being oriented or is being orientated or is being initiated into into the craft they go to a place called a coven where all the witches gather and meet when they are leaving that place an assignment may be given and say the first person that you meet on the street let that person be your mark and so people you can have random attacks from witchcraft and don't even know why you're going through what you're going through but these curses and these spells can be broken easily if there is somebody who have the, un the understanding and the anointing and the revelation of how to break it you know praise god all right hallelujah i am out of questions now i'm going to pray for you Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I lift my hands and I stretch my hands over the social media and I pray for those who are listening and watching by way of this um, event. I break, Lord God, every assignment of the enemy that is trying to block them from their prophetic destiny. Everything that is fighting them, everything that is hindering them from coming to the fulfillment of their purpose, of their call, of their ministry, of their anointing. Father God, I break it every power, every dragon that has been standing at the edge of their breakthrough, waiting to devour their baby, waiting to devour their prophetic promise. I break it. Every giant that is trying to make them circle in the wilderness for their lives to go around in circle. I command your prophecy to no longer circle. I command your prophecy to find landing this year. Let everything that you have promised them that has been prophesied to them, let those things come to pass in this season. I decree that this is a season for the promise to be birthed. I decree that this is the season for the fulfillment of prophecy. I come against every power warring against your prophecy and I decree that those powers will fall down and die. I call forth your divine helpers, people who are your destiny helpers, who will help to push you into your prophetic destiny. I command your gifts in you to stir up. I command the prophetic in you to wake up. I command the gifts in you that is dormant to come alive. I fan them to flame by prophetic authority. I speak with grace and favor tonight and I bless those on this 
this broadcast. I say be blessed. I say receive favor. I say receive breakthrough. I say receive abundance. I say receive plenty. By prophetic authority, I pronounce irresistible favor over your life. Receive it now in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Love and appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thanks for all the love that you have been sending up on this telecast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stay with me for an hour and more to listen to these teachings. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow will be greater. God bless.